we're breaking some trail in to where the, the moose is standing. And then we'll get in there and assess the, the health of the animal and then potentially euthanize it. This animal was spotted from the helicopter and from the spotter plane. It was behaving abnormally. So its head was tilted, it was walking in circles, its ears were hanging down, and, uh, and clearly it was unable to feed and unable to behave normally. So it was going to die. And then I'm gonna get a safe shot and I'm gonna shoot the thing. And then everybody can come. Three, two, one. As a wildlife biologist, Seth Moore has shot more moose than most hunters in Minnesota. It's not something he's proud of. Like this bull moose, all were deathly sick. It's indicative of, of brain worm. Um, that would be my leading suspicion as, as far as what was likely wrong with this. But we'll send samples off from all kinds of different body parts and get a true diagnosis. Moore's team recently shot this video of a moose swimming circles in Lake Superior, confused and near drowning. A necropsy later confirmed the animal had a parasite in its eyes and was also suffering from brainworm. Brainworm is a parasite carried by white-tailed deer and transmitted by snails. It's not new to moose, but the rate at which moose in Minnesota are now dying of it and other causes is raising alarm. And this is the sound a call would make. Last year, moose numbers declined so steeply, the state and local Chippewa tribes canceled the moose hunt. It's an important part of our of our diet and our, our way of life. Hunting is not a factor that's causing the moose population decline. 95% of the animals that died last year died of a result of natural causes. Over the past decade, the state's moose population has dropped by half, and still no one seems to know why. Moose are very important around here. It brings the tourists. Everybody wants to see a moose. Well, there's a lot of talk, and you stop in the shops, and the moose on everything. Dinner plates, curtains, got them on, I mean, it's the North Woods, you know, but yet you don't see much of them anymore. One theory points to heat stress and the long-term effects of climate change. Despite this harsh winter, there was a clear warming trend across the region. The number one driving factor is likely climate change, and we've lost half of our February snow depth in a 20-year period. We've seen a five or six degree Fahrenheit increase in August maximum temperature in about a 60-year period. I, I think that's pretty dramatic. We know that moose don't do well in warm temperatures. We know that if it's not cold enough, they don't do well either. So is that thermal stress causing them to be predisposed to uh, health, un underlying health conditions that they wouldn't have normally? To answer that question, wildlife biologists have launched an unprecedented high-tech effort to collar and track Minnesota moose and learn why so many are dying. Okay, are you off to the east of me? Do you see us leaving the airport here? Yeah, I got you there. Yeah, if you guys end up eventually riding down the runway, we're probably going to dart it right off the end of the runway here on the uh, west end. The two tranquilizing darts contain an opioid strong enough to bring down an elephant. As the drug takes effect, a capture team gets to work on a 900-pound moose cow. Her calf has since fled. They take samples and more samples. Blood, fur, fecal matter, and ticks. Okay, your tag. She's given a collared GPS device that will transmit her location every few hours. Then she's force-fed an internal monitor that will lodge into her gut. Oh. Uh. Finally, the moose is injected with more drugs to reverse the immobilizers. Go ahead. Within yeah. seconds, she struggles to her feet. Hold on, hold on. And trots on. off to look for her calf. You gotta be kidding me. A day later, Moose 13827 will begin beaming precise coordinates and temperature data to desktop computers and cell phones Response teams will monitor her movements and heart rate so that if her heart stops and she dies, they will know precisely when and where to find her. 
The technology that we have is really cutting edge. We're able to get on an animal that we believe has died within 24 hours. We can only determine a cause of death if we can get that fast enough and get the animal out and then do the test. The state's mortality study is now in its second year, with nearly 200 moose online. And the data coming back is anything but certain. One mil, check. Well, it isn't one thing that's killed the moose so far in the study. It's been predator-related causes, and it's been health-related causes, kind of a 50-50 split. And the health-related causes have been also kind of a number of things, uh, parasites and other even unknowns. Come on, girl. Where we had really good diagnostic samples, but there wasn't any one thing that really pointed to why that moose died. And then there's the trauma of the capture itself. Last year, at least four moose died from capture-related causes. And we're asked that, you know, often by the public, um, that, you know, the stress of what we're trying to do to them is just, you know, we're a cause of mortality. And, you know, we can be. We know that it, a few animals will die in these kind of capture methods. But I think it's worth that uh, for the population as a whole to really try to get at these answers and see if we can do something to save them. The problem is not limited to Minnesota. Researchers elsewhere along Moose's southern range, from Montana to New Hampshire, are seeing similar declines. There's really not a whole lot you can do, you know, and uh, we're not to the point, at least in our study, where we can really point to climate change as a clear cause, but that's in the back of our mind. If we can really pinpoint the overlying cause, then can we even do anything about it to really curtail this decline? Or are we just really, you know, documenting a species on its way out of our state?